When I use the term dialogue, I'm referring to a specific form of communication where participants having their own perspectives still recognize the existence of other different perspectives and remain open to them. It is not the same as monologue, where only one person is talking, and it is also not the same as debate, which can be described as serial monologues. Dialogue requires listening to the other and seriously attempting to understand what is said and often, though not always, results in participants changing some of their assumptions. Intercultural dialogue has been used as a technical term by different people with different meanings. In one use, intercultural dialogue is used to refer to any interaction, mediated or face-to-face, -face, in which the participants have different cultural backgrounds. Encompassing virtually all examples of intercultural communication, this may be discarded as too broad and not especially helpful. In a second use, intercultural dialogue refers to specific types of intercultural interactions, those in which dialogue is taken to be a specific goal. Dialogue in the sense that I gave you earlier, where you are at the very least listening to somebody else. This narrower use will be my focus tonight. Unlike other types of intercultural communication, which include nonverbal and unconscious elements, intercultural dialogue typically is assumed to require both language and intent, being a deliberate verbal exchange of views. Intercultural dialogues are designed to achieve understanding of cultural others as an immediate goal, with the more advanced steps of achieving agreement and cooperation held as potential later goals. Dialogue assumes difference. Intercultural dialogue specifically assumes intercultural differences between participants. People who already share all of their assumptions have no need for dialogue. Instead, dialogue implies members of different groups who have conflicting opinions and assumptions speaking to one another in acknowledgement of those differences and attempting to bridge the gap between their ideas. Wishing to present his or her own ideas and have them heard, each participant must agree to listen to the views of the other in exchange. Dialogue between those holding the most divergent viewpoints are of course the most difficult but also the most critical. Although by common definition, dialogue does not require agreement as a result, participants frequently hope that agreement in at least some areas may be achieved. At the very least, understanding serves as a reasonable beginning and is certainly preferable to conflict. 